All right, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the official kickoff of the Sustainable Future program that we're driving together with our partners from Accenture. Uh, my name is Miroslav Dimitrov, and together with my colleague Felipe, my partner in crime, we have the pleasure of being your hosts today. Um, I would like to walk you through the agenda for today, and hopefully um, you are able to see my screen right now. So uh, after a very short introduction of how we came to this program, we're going to be inviting our guest panelists to kick off the event uh, with a short panel on the topic of sustainability as a strategy. And we're very honored to have today Jan Gilk, our president of S4HANA, Peter Lacey, Global Sustainability Services Lead and Chief Responsibility Officer in Accenture. And the panel will be moderated by Alexa Gorman, who is heading the ACPI of Foundries and Entrepreneurship. We've then prepared um, a very short um, startup pitches for you. So the 13 startups will do a 60 second pitch before we open the breakout rooms. And when it comes to the breakout rooms, um, we've prepared four sessions, each on a specific topic that you could see on the screen where the founders of the companies together with our guest panelists um, and all of you, of course, um, will have an open conversation um, on these points. Now, um, I wanted to let you know that for the breakout rooms, you'll be able to hop directly um, and move between the rooms um, on the topic that you're interested in. And to make it easy for you in the very beginning, we're going to be distributing everyone um, on the call um, randomly to save you some time. Um, and after that, it will be time to um, have the final picture and wrap it up. And of course, if you have any questions at that point, we'll be happy to, to address them. We've prepared a very small surprise. Um, so Philippe, I'll give it to you um, to explain to the group what the surprise is. Yeah, so big surprise. Um, so hi guys again, this is Philip, Philip Sweedy from the SAP Foundry Munich. Um, and this is a surprise actually from our last uh, cohort, our cohort with Red Bull and FC Bayern on fan experience. And the folks from Tony, Tony AI just developed their own product because they saw emotions are missing in virtual events. And they developed a completely new product on that. And this will be launched today and will be shown to you guys today. So let's go forward with that. And what these guys do, actually Regina from the Tony AI team is here with us. She will post everything you need to know in the chat, which will direct you through a link on a page and everything is self-explanatory. That's what the startup said. And of course we believe them. And I'm happy to see your reactions towards our kickoff to spring 2021. Let's go forward. Miro, it's yours again. Thank you, Felipe. Um, I'm looking forward to see um, my own emotions there. So please, <laughs> please click on the link in the chat that you see to be able to, to activate that feature. So for those, of, for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, um, we wanted to give you a very high level overview of what is it that our unit is doing. So in, in short, ACPIO is SAP's strategic business unit that works with entrepreneurs inside and outside of SAP to really help them scale their B2B software as a service ventures in our ecosystem. And specifically in the Foundries network, um, what we do is we work in a programmatic approach jointly with our industry business units, product and customer success teams to find the most aspiring founders um, that we can and help them really succeed in the enterprise software ecosystem, of course, together with us. Now, currently we have um, nine global locations, as you can see on the slide. And here on the right, you can see some of our programs that we will be running um, in, in, in the first half of this year. And as you could see, we are covering a broad spectrum of industries and topics, which also, of course, reflects um, the ambition um, of our company. Now, given the strategic importance of, of the sustainability topic, um, and Felipe, can you move to the next slide, please? Sure. Um, it is really the first time that um, our two foundries, Berlin and Munich, um, joined forces, but it's also the first time that you know, two of our teams work together on a single program. Um, and we are also, of course, very happy to be partnering with Accenture in this program, given it's a natural extension of the great work that um, Anita and our colleagues from, from both companies have been doing with respect to our commitment during the World Economic Forum, and of course, um, towards the SDG ambition goals. Um, and as you see, we identified four main areas that we were looking um, for innovations and for innovators, which um, you were able to see on the slide. And um, 
yeah, I will give it over to you, Felipe, to really walk our audience through some of the metrics and, and how we came up with the 13 teams um, that they will be seeing today. And so that um, they can understand a little bit about our process behind it. Sure. So I think, uh, first of all, I need to go a half step back here and explain you where we're coming from. So as you maybe know, we had SAP, we are an SAP IO and SAP IO is part of NVT, um, New Ventures and Technology. So we are in the innovation part of our company and we were fostering very strongly innovation. And typically what we have, what we do in such a innovation um, or in an innovation methodology is we're working together with our internal teams to find out where they're heading to, what kind of technologies are interesting for the future. There we have different horizons, horizon one, two, and three, and there we're looking into these horizons, what is, what, what is needed. On the other side, we reach out to our customers and really try to understand what our customers' needs are. Taking these two parts in consideration, we then go with another partner together. In this case, it's Unternehmertum from the Technical University of, University of Munich. And what we did is we analyzed the whole ecosystem of sustainability and sustainability startups, identified in there 1,500 startups, which we think are interesting from technology-wise, solution-wise, but also team-wise. And we reached out to these 1,500 startups and said like, hey guys, do you want to work with SAP to build a sustainable future? 193 um, startups responded to that call. And we took these 193 startups, um, clustered them, clustered them by solutions, by team age, so maturity, and actually had a pretty broad overview, um, a global overview about the startup. So as you see on the right-hand side of the slides, we had 41 application from Germany, but then very fast followed by the US. What we see from the founder split, uh, female founders and underrepresented founders, is was 48 to 52 in these 193 startups. What we did then, again, we went back to our lines of businesses, to, to our partners, Accenture, and also to the customers, and we reduced this whole number actually at the end to 29. Let's go, what came out of that? So we had 29 startups, and these 29 startups we took into a selection week this time. And this selection week really meant every morning we had a session and afternoon session with our customers together. 16 customers were involved. So in total, we had 51 people from the customer side plus SAP people, plus the Accenture team sitting there working 15.5 hours to select those 13 startups. So I think it's a, it's a huge achievement for those 13 startups, which are here today to go through this huge selection process. At the end, as you see on the left-hand side, those startups are evenly distributed. Of course, we have uh, four out of Germany, so a majority there, but then pretty evenly distributed around the world. And also from the topic, some carbon tracking and trading is of course a huge topic, but then very fast followed by circular economy. In our selection week, we had a lot of response. So think about 308 questions were asked. So it was pretty interactive. And who are the 13 startups? You saw it already on LinkedIn, but I want to present them again. It's Astrea, Breeze, Carbon Mines, Changers, Circular IQ, Cocheck, Amitwise, Footprint, Lizzie, Lixu, Greenplat, Journey Foods, and Too Good To Go. And I think it's a very interesting mix what we have out of different fields, really, like Astrea looking from space on our, on, on our world, Footprint looking at small foots, especially child foots, uh, Lizzie revolutionizing really the circular economy, like coming from selling to renting, and Too Good To Go, don't waste any food. I think it's, it's huge what these guys, um, where, who they are and what they are doing. The, the good thing is they will all pitch one minute what they're doing, and then you have a chance again in the breakout rooms addressing those startups and hear more about them. Let's go forward. The team, Miro, please. I mean, of course, this this um, wouldn't be possible without um, the great team behind, right? And and I would say again that this was the first time that um, all of us were were working jointly together. And um, I think I speak on behalf of both of us, Felipe, when I say that we're super happy and proud of of all, of all the hard work that went into it, right? And, and just to remind everyone, this is really the start, right? 
Um, and of course, thank you to, to you, right? Um, our ecosystem um, of partners and supporters for your expertise, for your feedback, and of course, for opening up um, your networks to support these great founders. Um, so kudos um, to, to both sides. Um, and, you know, if, um, Philippe, if you can move then um, to slides, I would like to invite um, Alexa Gorman um, to our virtual stage to really uh, present our guests um, and kick off the panel. Alexa, over to you. Thank you, Miroslav, and also a big thank you for me to the team and to the broader community, Accenture and the customers for helping us get to today and then also supporting us on the journey that we're starting today. Um, as Philippe and Miroslav said, I'm thrilled to, to welcome you to this um, short panel that will be taking us till about six o'clock um, around the topic of sustainability as a strategy. I'm joined um, by Peter Lacey, Chief Responsibility Officer and Global Sustainability Service Lead at Accenture. So welcome, Peter. And Jan Gilk, um, who's president of S4HANA at SAP, which is our flagship product that encompasses not only ERP, but finance and supply chain as well. And in his responsibility, he has um, global responsibility for the development, delivery and product management of solutions in that area. So welcome both of you and thank you for joining us. Um, maybe I'll start with you, Peter, um, to kick us off, why do we need a circular economy and, and is there really a need for a sustainable strategy in companies? Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Alexa. It's great to be with you, with Jan, and uh, to officially kick off this wonderful SAP uh, IO Sustainable Future Program. Um, we started to partner with SAP and Accenture on sustainability as far back as Davos in 2020, uh, along with the United Nations Global Compact, uh, and indeed on in that day with the Secretary General and, and with 3M. And if you'll remember, probably that was on our SDG ambition framework to look at how companies integrate sustainability into their strategy. So very relevant to your question um, and really excited to be partnering again. Um, I think, let me start by saying, yes, companies absolutely need sustainability as part of core business strategy. Right. This is no longer a bolt on. This is not a marginal issue. This is now an issue of competitiveness. And it's about revenue growth, cost reduction, risk management, innovation, brand and intangible assets. And it needs to flow through the DNA of companies like a double helix. And the other part of that double helix is technology and digital transformation. Those are going to be the twin themes for growth and innovation for businesses over the next decade. So uh, I'm very excited to see this program uh, turning insight into action and supporting the scale of disruptive sustainable innovation across this cohort of 13 entrepreneurs. It's been a great process. Um, I thank to thank you to SAP, uh, but also to Lego, to P&G, to Unilever, Bayer, Deutsche Telekom, BMW, Daimler, Henkel. It's been a really collaborative, widespread initiative. So I've answered your first question about strategy. Is it important? Yes. Second is circular economy. Well, why is that important? Well, for me, this is about a new industrial revolution that really decouples what we want from the economy, jobs, growth, economic development, prosperity, the goods and products and services that people want and need from the scarce and harmful use of natural resources, the things we don't need. And so that's really about the shift from a linear economy, take, make, waste, to a circular economy that reuses, recycles, recovers, regenerates uh, our global economy and our environment and our planet in ways that are good for all. And that's why it's great to see things like the one trillion green stimulus over the next 10 years in the EU. It's great to see China stepping up. Uh, 2030, 50% decarbonization goal, 2060, 100% decarbonization of China. It's why it's great to see Joe Biden, John Kerry, Kamala Harris stacking hands on policy initiatives on sustainability. One final thing I will say uh, for the circular economy is it isn't just a, an imperative for us as custodian stewards for future generations or even our own generation. It's also an enormous business opportunity. We believe that in global value chains, supply chains, the kind of businesses where Accenture and SAP partner in enterprises and supply chains, 
We think there is a four and a half trillion dollar opportunity to 2030 based on our latest book, the Circular Economy uh, Handbook, uh, which really comes to life uh, in terms of the examples of companies that are using this to create circular advantage. And that can help not only drive the sustainable development goals that you can see behind my head, um, so I always keep them there to keep us honest and make sure that we're all focused on True North uh, and the North Star, um, but it can also be a huge business opportunity. Yeah, and I totally agree. I think SAP sees it as well as a huge opportunity for our customers as well. And Jan, um, maybe to you, just could you highlight some of the efforts that SAP is driving or some of the initiatives that we're driving in the sustainability space and maybe highlight or see also, sorry, some of the partnerships that we're um, driving with Accenture that between SAP and Accenture in regard to supporting the global SDG. Yeah, absolutely. And thank, thanks so much, uh, Alexa. And actually, it's uh, <clears throat> an honor for me to be here today, um, you know, in this uh, in this kickoff, especially together with Peter here from, from Accenture. And we have been spending quite some time, time together lately, and I'm looking forward to more time uh, in the future because it shows already how important uh, this topic overall is for um, Accenture as well as uh, for SAP. And I think it's a, it's a great partnership that we have here. Um, just to um, step one, take one step back, I mean, for, for us, our purpose is to help the world run better and improve people's lives. And this is really a guiding principle for, for our business strategy. So with that already, sustainability is at the, at the core of what we do here um, at, at SAP. And, um, you know, our partnership here with the United Nations uh, Global Compact and Accenture on the SDG ambition is actually an important component uh, of our sustainability efforts. Yeah, so the, the SDG ambition aims to engage uh, the leaders across more than 1,000 companies, uh, and I believe in, in more than 40 countries now over the next two years. And uh, we definitely feel we need to set some more ambitious targets here and then also advance the integration of the SDGs then into our core business systems. And that's exactly uh, what we're trying to do here also with um, S4HANA then. Uh, so therefore, um, I'm super excited here about the partnership with, with Accenture and also uh, now to see how, how the SAPIO foundries in, in Berlin and Munich turn now into a concrete program, you know, the, the sustainability future, um, together with the cohort here of uh, 13 entrepreneurs who are really selected from, I think here again, 190 applications from 35 countries. So we see, um, you know, the momentum that is there on the, on the market. Um, and across all industries. And this is really why, why this is such an exciting topic also for us. Definitely. And just maybe to talk a little bit, uh, Jan, before we, um, we end basically this short panel with, with Peter, but um, you know, you're, you're head of the development and product management area within SAP. Um, what role do you think technology plays you know, both for large and smaller companies in achieving the global SDGs? Yeah, I think if I look into, into ERP and the solutions that we have at SAP, um, we typically talk about end-to-end uh, -end processes and how we cover those processes. And um, obviously, uh, first and foremost, the, the topic of visibility is extremely critical so that companies really understand um, you know, their, their consumption of, of greenhouse gas and, uh, you know, in general, uh, natural resources and potentially also, also uh, the, the waste they are producing. Uh, and uh, then when we talk about the circular economy and how to feed that basically back into the, into the cycle, and then Peter touched on that. So all those solutions that we have, and I think one of the advantages is really the breadth of the solutions that we have that are able to cover supply chains end to end and even through things like the networks that we have go into multiple tiers of the supply chain, we're really able to capture this data. Uh, and calculate those footprints uh, in a very accurate way. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of standards that are actually being uh, created right now, and uh, you have to have certain reporting standards and so on to make this all comparable and so on. And I think our heritage coming from the finance area and compliance have, has always been a big topic at SAP. I believe you also have the credibility that it's clear we will adhere to whatever um, standards will be uh, coming up or invented over the next couple of, of months and years. We will adhere to that. We will make sure the software uh, keeps, keeps up to date there. And then you basically create the transparency and you can, you can report on it. And that's uh, certainly only the first step. I think where it becomes really interesting is now how do companies or how can we help companies to make decisions then on this data? 
And uh, that's why we always say that sustainability becomes almost uh, a new dimension actually of value creation uh, if you use our solutions, because at the end of the day, it will be uh, a matter of survival for many companies to not only take a decision based on profitability and cost and whereas it may be the cheapest to build a, a new plant or something like that but also what does that mean in terms of the carbon footprint in terms of uh, how sustainable is that decision and potentially and i think peter touched on that as well uh, that more sustainable decision will be also uh, economically more viable yeah? and this is then basically again where we come back and say we manage uh, all of this uh, within a system like ERP and with some of the services that we are building on top of it and that are open also to partners then to, to innovate on top. And I believe that is the advantage. So we see ourselves really as this engine, basically, that creates the source of truth that already provides um, capabilities to simulate decisions, to put decisions then also in actions in terms of, you know, picking the right suppliers, uh, picking the right transportation strategy of goods, uh, the right production sequence and so on, the right bill of material, uh, but also give the opportunity then for the partner ecosystem to come in and build on top of that and leverage what we have, pull the data that we uh, have available and so on. So I'm really looking at the sustainability topic clearly as an ecosystem topic as well, where we want to play a foundational role. Great. Um, Peter, anything to add? Because I know you have a strong opinion around the, the, the driving force or the enablement potential of technology in this, in making our future a more sustainable one. I think, yeah, I made a brilliant point, right, which is that this is about rewiring the global economy to be able to measure manage, create insight and make decisions based on sustainability alongside financial data. I think he absolutely nailed it. Right? So we are rewiring the global economy and technology will play a huge role in many, many ways. Now, of course, um, it will provide many of the solutions and I'll come back to that. But I wanted to stick with Jan's point first, which is what do I mean by rewiring the global economy? So traditionally, we have started um, by measuring GDP in financial terms. Now we know that 193 governments have signed up to the SDGs, 193 governments have signed up to the Paris Accord. And so we need to be able to measure national performance, regional performance at that level. That comes down to the corporate level, rightly, as Jan mentioned, for example, um, at the World Economic Forum, they've been working to bring the big four accounting firms and some of the standards bed bodies together. We're going to see storming and forming um, in terms of, of regulation, policy, self-regulation. Uh, we're going to see many of those standards emerge uh, in much more powerful ways. Joe Biden, first day he came into office, uh, re-signed the Paris Accord, uh, to ask all companies listed on New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ to uh, report against their carbon uh, risk, for example. And so I think what's going to be needed in um, solutions is that accuracy, that end-to-end -end view, that transparency, trust, traceability of data on environmental data, on social data, on governance data, uh, through your supply chain, through your value chain. Uh, and so that's one example, very critical enabler of technology. And as, as Jan Riley said, it's right. It's not just you know um, presidents and prime ministers or CEOs and CFOs. It's right down to the team in procurement buying pencils, right? You know, so I mean that's a, maybe a, a sort of slightly comical example, but it isn't because suddenly it's not just the lowest cost or the best quality or where it's coming from. Suddenly you've got to look at well, look, where am I buying it from? You know, is it from sustainable sources, et cetera, et cetera. So there needs to be tools right it's retooling the organization that's what i firstly would say the second thing i would say is that for us the two critical concepts for being competitive with sustainability are enabling business models and enabling disruptive technologies what do i mean by that what jan mentioned about the transition to a low carbon or a circular economy one of the reasons that it is now possible in ways that add competitiveness to companies is that new technologies, we might call them fourth industrial revolution, you know, but they are across digital, physical and biological. They are artificial intelligence, big data and analytics, but they're also human genomics, the next generation of plant sciences. They are also physical shifts in the shift from 
uh, fossil fuel based energy to renewable energies uh, or the shift to new material sciences, light weighting uh, materials, but with the same kinds of strengths. And so the real story is how digital technology interacts with those other technologies and supports new business models. Things like product as a service, things like um, extending life cycles of products, things like sharing economy platforms, B2B, B2C, that are actually able to use resources far more productively in businesses, uh, in, the, in our global economy. And I'll give you one good example that we supported through our global program, uh, the Circular Economy Awards with the WEF, uh, which is AMP, who've developed their Cortops, uh, Cortex robot to automate the identification, sorting and processing of material streams for businesses that recycle municipal waste, e-waste and construction and demolition materials. And so this is really using machine vision, machine learning, advanced AI and robotics, but also with physical innovation, meeting digital innovation in ways that allow us to close loops on waste in supply chains. The Cortex robot can sort 80 pieces per minute and the accuracy of the system is now improved to 99%. So it's a great example for me of some of the other uh, innovations that we're seeing out of the foundries that we're seeing in the partnership that bring together those disruptive technologies. Uh, and as our Europe CEO, John Mark, talks about, this is uh, a lot about the twin engines of sustainability and digital being the, the new drivers of transformation and growth over the next decade. Um, and I think, you know, just like the example of AMP, I would just say that we are absolutely thrilled to share these 13 circular trailblazers. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. And this kind of partnership between very large global companies with enormously complex uh, supply chains, value chains with SAP and Accenture and with uh, being able to apply these in companies and actually test and innovate is absolutely what we want to be doing to innovate as we rewire that global economy. No, totally. And I think we see it as well as that classical win, win, win and partnering with with Accenture and and the startups and our customers and SAP really um, helps the startups to scale. Um, it helps the customers to adopt interesting and really innovative technologies that help them become more sustainable. Um, and so we're, we're the matchmakers between those two, which is is the fun part for us as a team as well. Um, just looking at the time, I know we, we have a hard stop at um, 6 p.m. European time. Um, Jan, just the last question for you. You are um, a big supporter of working with startups. You've met with many startups in the past and helped them on their journeys um, through SAP as well. Any last bits of advice um, that you want to, to share with the entrepreneurs that are joining the family, the ecosystem uh, today? Yeah, um, in fact, I have actually uh, worked with a, a bunch of, of startups and also through the program. And I think um, it's absolutely critical. And for us uh, as, as a company, it is super important to, uh, to have that kind of engagement because frankly, um, I laid that out and, and Peter uh, confirmed it as well. I mean, we have uh, Accenture and SAP both are huge corporations uh, and we do have a big reach into a lot of customers and we are touching a lot of processes and deep supply chains and all of that. And this is great, uh, but uh, where we lack often is really to have the nimbleness and the agility to really come up with a new idea and put it into action right away. And I think this is what, what, where I'm looking for, for the startups to bring in those ideas and then basically really get into or plug themselves into this ecosystem and help building it up. And I think the most important thing is really from my perspective uh, to keep up the, the spirit of, of innovation and sometimes get not too frustrated if things you know, take a little bit longer and it seems to be difficult and complex to interact and, and to get responses. So uh, stay on it and, and also keep us on our toes, frankly. Um, you know, and uh, because I believe it's it's important and it's good for SAP as well. And I can only tell you the willingness is absolutely there. I think everybody at SAP sees the advantages and many of my colleagues in, in, in the, on the product side have worked successfully with startups. And I think this is really, uh, as we talk about uh, the world that is moving um, more and more into the cloud, uh, this is anyway a new model. And so we can learn also from those uh, startups, but like, again, uh, keep us on our toes, uh, be consistent, uh, you know, don't take no for an answer. And I think we can make a lot of things happen. 
Thank you very much, Jan, and thank you, Peter. And with that, I'll hand it back to Miroslav and Philippe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Alexa. Thank, thank you. you very much, Jan, and thank you very much, Peter. So um, just one sentence to the partnership. So I believe it's a true partnership between SAP and Accenture here, because on one side, partnership between Munich and Berlin, so the German team, plus the international team from Accenture with uh, Catherine, Clotaire, Dave, uh, Harry, and May. So we work very closely as one team together and that was so fast and so smoothly and you see some of the results today. Let's move to the most important part of this evening and these are the startups, right? Um, this, that's the reason why we are here. And uh, on one side, the startups have a huge task and that's pitch their interesting thing, their passion in one minute, which is not so easy, right? And on the other side, you guys, you listeners, you participants of the event, note down which startup you want to look at, which you want to hear more of, because then you need to choose a room where these startups are in for afterwards. So let's start with one startup, which has a view from space on Earth. Let's start with Brandon with Astrea, please. Thanks, Philippe. Um, and under a minute, this is quite hard to do, but let me give it a shot. <laughs> um, we at Astrea, we're, we're a software as a service provider. We've built what we believe is the most advanced and easy to use platform. We call it Earth AI that allows any organization to easily derive deep insight from Earth observing satellite imagery, drone imagery, aerial imagery, and other geospatial data. Importantly, we then enable organizations to take that insight and seamlessly incorporate it into their business processes, update it with new data, and use it to drive decisions around their, their particular businesses. A couple of examples, um, our platform enables uh, emissions monitoring for organizations. It, it enables supply chain monitoring for organizations, change detection. Uh, it enables ESG investing decisions uh, CO2 sequestration, monitoring and measurement for the Nature Conservancy, and many, many other applications. We're basically trying to make satellite, Earth observing satellite imagery and other geospatial data accessible, analyzable, and incorporatable into, into companies' decision processes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Brandon. Um, let's move forward very fast um, to Robert from Breeze. Please uh, tell us what Breeze is. Hello, everybody. My name is Robert Heinecke. I'm the founder and CEO of Breeze Technologies. We are a German tech leader in the field of air quality sensors, data, and analytics. Air pollution is the greatest environmental health threat of our time, and nine out of 10 people are living in areas of, with too high levels of air pollution. And we want to change that. And how we do that is we made air quality monitoring devices 50,000 times smaller and 1,000 times cheaper than the current market standard. With that, we create hyperlocal maps of air quality to then facilitate better decision making. And we do that for cities, we do it for businesses, and we also do it for other organizations like NGOs. In Hamburg, for instance, we run the densest air quality monitoring network in the world. For a German chemical ducts leader, we are running an emissions monitoring network around their main facility in Germany. And for one of the digital hubs of the German government, we help them to do coronavirus risk mitigation by monitoring air quality inside of their co-working space. If you want to create a healthier environment for anybody, then please do reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Let's move forward. Mauro, Emmett Wise, are you there? I am here. Thank you so much. Perfect. For you. Thank you, everyone. This is such an incredible event. I'm so excited to, to be here. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Emitwise. Uh, we're a software and technology company entirely focused on helping businesses measure, report, and ultimately, and most importantly, reduce their carbon footprint. What makes Emitwise special is that we bring this combination of two sides of a DNA. Half of our DNA is a disruptive Silicon Valley technology startup. We're backed by some of the leading Silicon Valley investors in the world. 
you know, the folks that backed Google in its early days, for example. And the other half of our DNA is deep expertise in sustainability. Um, the people in our team um, were the folks that wrote the books on how do you do carbon accounting, speaking of all of those standards and sustainability that we were speaking about earlier on. Um, some of our team members were the people that crafted those standards and together what that allows us to do is to really help drive the agenda that SAP and Accenture and everybody else here is putting forward and ultimately helping businesses analyze their carbon footprint, understand how they can profitably reduce it by bringing technology innovation, the likes that you would have seen in, you know, automating self-driving cars, but we're bringing that to, to carbon. Um, so looking forward to this discussion and you can reach me on mauro at emitwise.com. Thank you, Philippe. Thank you, Mauro. Let's move from London to Paris. Majorie, Lixo. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for having us. Um, uh, my name is Marjorie. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Lixo. And our mission is to make recycled materials as competitive as virgin materials in terms of price and in terms of quality. The reason why it's not the case yet is because all along the value chain, the waste management value chain, there are bits of in, uh, inefficiency. Uh, the reason behind that is because all industrials managing waste don't have any idea of what exactly is the waste is they're trying to uh, valorize. What we're doing is we're analyzing waste flows directly in real time through AI and small bits of hardware. Um, we've been working for, with the clients all along the value chain and we're happy to be working with more. Uh, so you can reach me at marjorie at lixo.tech. Thanks. Thank you, Marjorie. Let's stay in Paris. Let's move over to Lizzie Tangi. Please tell us more about Lizzie. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Tanguy. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Lizzy. So at Lizzy, we're obsessed with unpossession and reusage. We developed a software as a service for brands and retailers called the Reuse Management System to help them integrate the circular economy thanks to the rental and the resale of some of their products. So our data-driven platform allows the management of e-commerce and logistic flows for a seamless and profitable service. So thanks to the multiple usage of all the goods that people rent, brands can actually boost their margins, operate their sustainable transformation, clear unsold inventory, which obviously uh, nowadays is very important and target, target new type of clients. Uh, and we work today with brands such as Adidas, uh, Leclerc, Decathlon, or Galerie Lafayette, among few others. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and I'll be more than happy to talk to all of you uh, during the, the breakout sessions. Thank you, SAP. Thank you, Tangi. Let's move from Paris to the Netherlands. Roy, Circular IQ. Yes, thank you. Hi, I'm Roy. I'm the CEO and founder of Circular IQ. I'm here together with Niels. Companies across the globe have made sustainability promises, but there's one big problem. They can't measure their performance properly, nor report on impact. If businesses want to comply and thrive, they need accurate information. They need the right data. And that's where we come in. Our software tool helps businesses across industries to measure and improve their circular performance and report on their impact. Join us in breakout room two to learn how our software helps you deliver on your sustainability promises and report on your impact and join over 1,000 organizations in over 80 countries that are already using our software as their go-to solution. Thank you. Hey, Roy, you're the first one who remembers his room. Perfect, awesome job here. <laughs> well done. Let's move uh, from the Netherlands to the US. Let's move to Rihanna, please, Journey Foods. Awesome, well, thank you so much. We're so, we're so grateful to be a part of the cohort and, and looking to continue the conversation in the AI breakout. Uh, so Journey Foods solves supply chain and, and food science inefficiencies uh, for the number one cause of degradation of our bodies and the planet. And that's, uh, the, that is the food industry. Uh, so we help thousands of companies improve millions of product lines so that billions of eaters uh, can fare better opportunities. And the way we do this is we use artificial intelligence and product management to power sustainability, the nutrition and the cost behind every single product that's bought to market today. And uh, we would not be able to do that without a highly integrated solution. And that's why we build on top of uh, 
and they're looking to bring our solution to SAP Marketplace, but we also have built many in other integrations uh, that already uh, are integrated into many supply chains across the world. Uh, we're based in Austin, Texas, with some of the top investors from three different continents. Uh, we also have a fast growing database of hundreds of thousands of products, ingredients, as well as uh, packaging data that generate over 12 billion unique insights. Our team is a wonderful balance of food scientists, data engineers, as well as critical thinkers. And I'm excited to bring my experience from scaling at Google and Beyond Meat uh, alongside just a wonderful, brilliant team. I uh, am very happy to build with you all uh, across this cohort and beyond. Thank you very much. So guys, um, just one sentence is like, you know, so much bad came with Corona, but the good thing is we are virtual and we can have all you guys in one virtual room and that's awesome. And that's maybe the only positive thing which came out of that. Let's move to Germany. Let's move to Arne. Let's, uh, let's hear more about carbon mines. Yeah, great. Um, hi everyone, I'm co-founder, I'm Arne, I'm co-founder and CEO of Carbon Mines. And um, I would like to invite you to have a look at all the chemicals around you. The keyboard on your desk or um, the paint on the walls. Um, chemicals are in about 95% of all the products that we use every day. So if we want to understand the climate impact of these products and understand how to reduce it, we need to know the carbon footprints of the chemicals that go into them from the extraction of the raw material throughout the entire production chain. But this data is often just not available. And this lack of data, it's, it's a huge barrier to meaningful climate action. And this is something that we are addressing. At Carbon Mines, we've built a digital model of chemical production chains. And we use this model to extract high quality product carbon footprint data for chemicals and plastics for all the relevant regions and even down to the individual suppliers, all the individual suppliers on the market. With this data at hand, our clients can improve their emissions monitoring, they can pinpoint their emissions hotspots, and they can even reduce their emissions through the choice of the most sustainable suppliers. So if you would like to learn more about this, please meet me on breakout session three. Remember the two. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Anne. Thank you, Anne. Let's move to Brazil. Chico, tell us more about Greenplat. Hello, everyone. I'm Chico Souza, founder of Greenplat. The world generates over than 2 billion tons of waste per year in a lack of trust market. We're helping municipalities and private companies to solve these issues by applying our blockchain as a service software to control the extraction of raw material, goods manufacturing, their loss of it, and public waste disposal. Also helping companies sell, search AB InBev, Mondelez, Renault, and others to achieve a circular economy approach, sustainable disposal, and better waste managed financial results. In city of Sao Paulo, doing surveillance with machine learning of more than 690,000 private companies, 18,000 tons of waste per day, help them to save $8 million in the first year of the project. With ACP and your help, we can deploy the solution worldwide. Please join this green, this green revolution with us in the room number three. Thank you, Chico. It's awesome what you built in, in South America and you're so big there. Let's move over to Kojak, to Switzerland. Gabriele, you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Yes, hi. Um, my name is Gabriele and I'm the CEO of Kojak. Um, so yeah, we are about um, consumer packaged goods. So performance and taste really used to be all that mattered for cosmetics and food products. Today, however, we want to know if products are both healthy for us and good for the planet. The Kojak app tells you. You scan the product's barcode and our proprietary algorithm rates it for health and sustainability. So that's how we empower millions of consumers every month to make healthy and sustainable shopping decisions. But we don't stop there, right? We enable companies to get ready for the modern consumer. We deliver insights based on the unbiased consumer interactions in our app and answer questions like, which ingredients will become unacceptable to consumers? Which ones are on a rising trend? Leading consumer packaged goods producers and retailers are already working with us to deliver better products to consumers. So join us in breakout session four and hear how your consumers can help you develop more healthy and sustainable products. Thank you, Gabriele. Let's move back to Germany. Um, let's move to Berlin, actually. Let's, uh, let's have Daniela from Changers. 
Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Daniela Schiffer, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Changers. And with the Changers here to fit up, we motivate citizens and employees to use the bicycle instead of the car, work more often, and use public transportation. Additionally, we showcase eco-friendly and healthy activities where users can learn more about waste reduction, healthy nutrition, energy saving, green mobility, and many more things. Climate change requires extensive changes in companies' production processes, but these can only be achieved on the long term. And with changes, on the other hand, we offer a simple, fast, and cost-effective way to start out of the box and today. Employees can be sensitized to the topics of climate change and health promotion. Companies have the opportunity to incentivize change and achieve measurable savings, CO2 savings. And our software is available as SaaS, as white label, and can be integrated into existing applications as an SDK. And I'm very much looking forward to meeting you in the breakout session number four. Daniela, thank you very much. Let's stay in Berlin and let's uh, get the guy who's got the best background picture, the winner of the best background picture out here. Please, Matthias, footprint, tell us more. Yeah, thank you for having us. Hello, my name is Matthias. I'm co-founder and CEO of Footprint Technologies. Did you know that more of 50% of all shoes ordered online will be returned? That's, of course, a really big issue for the online retailers who pay a lot of money for it, but also for customers who uh, have a lot of inconvenience by reshipments. And last not least, it's a really a mess for the planet as there's a lot of packaging waste and unnecessary CO2 emissions. We at Footprint Technology are solving this problem by enabling people to measure their feet via smartphone at home. And um, by providing these precise measurements, we can easily recommend the perfect shoe size for everybody in online shopping. If you want to learn more, please join workspace number four. Matthias, thank you very much. Um, let's go a little bit higher than Berlin. Let's go to Denmark. Um, let's go to, to good to go. Please, guys. Thank you very much. So uh, at Too Good To Go, we dream of a planet with no food waste. So we exist to address the, uh, the massive issue that one third of all food produced actually ends up going to waste, which in itself represents around 8% of total gas, greenhouse gas emissions in the world. So our mission is to uh, inspire and empower everyone to fight food waste together. And uh, the way we inspire is uh, by educating people on ways to avoid food waste at home or in the households where more than half of all food waste happens today in Europe. And we empower people, especially through our app, which is a marketplace that connects surplus food and danger of going to waste with our engaged uh, user community, which has allowed us to save almost 70 million meals from going to waste. And now we're looking forward to find more ways to, to fight food waste together with you guys, starting in room number four. Perfect. Thank you, Lasse. And the great thing is, I think a majority of our team is already using Too Good To Go. So uh, you have already impact here. So let's move to the rooms. I hope you guys know which startup you want to listen to. I think um, now it's up to Zilke and Zina. Just put up the slide for the room so everyone can choose his room where they need to move to. Yeah, so hello also from my side. Now it gets exciting um, because uh, our challenge is to bring 100, almost 140 people in breakout rooms. I assume you've never had uh, breakout rooms in such big size. Um, so please <laughs> be patient with us. Um, but yeah, so let's jump into the breakout rooms. We have four different breakout rooms, as you can see here. We have breakout room number one, which will be moderated by Philip. Um, saving the planet with next level data analytics. We have to start with Australia, M Advice, and Breeze in the panel. Um, if you want to learn more about driving better business and climate outcomes with circularity, I suggest you to go to room number two, where you can find Circular IQ, Lixu, and Lisi. Miroslav will moderate this room. In room number three, you will learn more about improved decision making for environmental impact. And our startups, Carbon Minds, Green Flat, and Journey Foods will talk about this. Our um, lovely partner, uh, Accenture, with Catherine, will moderate this room. And the last room is empowering consumers to achieve a greener future 
with our startups, Footprint, Changes, Kojak, and Too Good To Go, with our moderators, Erica and Sven. So now it's on you to decide where you'd like to go. Um, so we will start the breakout sessions in a second. If you have any troubles, I will stay in this room. So please just come back to the main room. If you want to switch, please do not leave the whole session. Just switch to the breakout room. Otherwise, you will be kicked out of this event and it would be really, really sad. And yeah, now I wish you all a lot of fun and um, yeah, good conversation. Ah, so we're in the big round now. Awesome. So how's the mood? How was it? We need to make some faces. We have, uh, you know, <laughs> so, okay, mood is there. Okay, everyone is happy still. Okay, um, I, I would say um, I, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, your time. I don't see Miro around at the moment. He's still um, talking. We have a me. very big, very big round of faces, Philip. Uh, you, you lost uh, me. Now you're here, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, I, I enjoyed. I, I joined the breakout session. Very interesting. I want to continue this conversation with you guys. I think uh, it would be good now to throw in the next slide, um, Zina or Silke, if you can do that, so then people can see how they can engage with us on their different levels, I believe. Exactly. Please, Miro. I mean, first of all, again, thanks for, for um, the great session and engagement in the breakout rooms. Um, we should absolutely um, continue the conversation. In fact, I, I see that um, 30 minutes is, is, is not enough, right? It's just the start. Um, and this is why we uh, wanted to encourage everyone. First of all, um, if you want to engage as a mentor, uh, which means that sharing your industry expertise and your professional um, um, background, right? please um, use the link that uh, Zina just shared in the chat um, and then you can you can register. It's really no strings attached. And, and again, we thank you um, for all of the mentors who are also here and continue to support the startups. Now, if you would like to have a more um, commercial kind of discussion, right, and see how some of these solutions can actually help your company or the organization you represent, um, please engage um, with our team, right? And our contacts will be on the next slide that you would see. And we're happy to um, organize for you a dedicated roundtable um, with the startups um, that, that you would like to see and engage, of course, experts from SAP and Accenture side to help you on that journey. Now, we also have a lot of our friends from the VC community, and we are happy to share that we will be organizing a dedicated VC day, right, where you could see um, all of the startups here, but also all of um, our other portfolio companies. And we would like to, of course, foster the discussion there and leave it up to you guys to connect um, and exchange equity for money. Um, and of course, the last call to action um, will be join us at our demo day, um, because if you like today's session, it's really just um, we're scratching the surface on the demo day. We plan to be showcasing end-to-end um, -end solutions to your um, and the industry's problems. Felipe, did I miss anything? No, all good. I, I think just maybe to add is really what we try to do in the next three months. Um, it will be a sprint. But we want to bring together all startups with customer, potential customers, and really also work on use cases, proof of concept. So for the demo day, we want to have results, right? And we, we want to move the needle. We want to move the needle together with Accenture. We want to move the needle together with all the SAP teams, with the with uh, also, you know, um, I don't want to forget Unternehmertum who supported us strongly in scouting, uh, Mickey Johannes, who've been there for us. So uh, it's really a, a joint effort. And I think that's so special about our, our foundries that uh, we get really teams together to do things. And in this case, for the startups, support them, that they grow, that they scale, and that they have impact. Uh, they have already impact, but even more impact after the next three months. That's, uh, that's my observation here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's time for um, the big selfie, right? Um, and again, thank you everyone for joining. Um, feel free, I mean, we still have um, basically 10 minutes, but feel free to chime in, share your comments, um, emotions, um, advice, anything um, is really welcome. And thank you for your continuous support. I mean, we're inc incredibly humbled and, and happy to be able to work with all of you. Yeah, enjoying working with you all guys. Those who, with whom we're not working, happy to engage. You saw my email address, Miro's email address. Reach out to us directly. We're happy to engage anytime with you. Thank you very much. And thank with you. that, see thank you guys. You so much.
Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. All right.